at the thrift store, when you see an as is sticker like the one on this cassette recorder, it might work, it might not work. Some people avoid items like that. I buy items like that. Now I have 10 thrift store electronic items I'm gonna test out and I'm gonna turn it into a game, a comment game, so you can play along too. That's coming up on Risky Thrifting Volume 6. You can find some great deals on electronics at the thrift store, but they might work, they might not work. You might be able to fix it, it might not be worth fixing. So it's a gamble. Well, I have 10 of these items that I've gambled on and I'm gonna see how many of them work. But before we play a guessing game, it's good to have an educated guess. So let's look at these 10 items. Okay, here we have a blue brand uh, Snowball Ice microphone. It is a USB microphone. There is no USB cable. It did come with its uh, tripod here and a box, but no packing material. As of right now, this is an item you can still buy new. They run about 50 bucks. As you can see, I paid a lot less than that. So I'll be interested to see if this works. That's not the only microphone I'll be testing out. This Realistic came in a box with a bunch of other audio gear from Goodwill. It is an XLR. There is no on-off switch. Uh, this appears to be a dynamic mic, and dynamic mics usually work, so I have a good feeling about this one. Here is an Optimus cassette recorder. Very plasticky feeling. Uh, fast forward, rewind, play, stop, record. In order for me to say this works, it needs to both record and play back a cassette tape. Here we have a Pioneer DVD player in a box, but it has an interesting feature. It's been modified to play any PAL or NTSC DVD. I'll be checking that feature out. And if it does both those things, I'm going to say this works. This little boom box here has a sticker that says it works, but I don't trust stickers like this. I'm going to test it out. For me to say this works, it needs to be able to play a CD. It needs to be able to both play and record a cassette, and both the AM and FM radio need to work. This looks like a computer monitor, but it's actually a 22 inch Westinghouse TV. For this to work, I need for the display to work, and I need to be able to pick up a TV signal. Whenever I see a forehead hi-fi VCR with its remote, I'm gonna pick it up, especially if it's only $3.99. We'll see if this Sony VCR can play back and record VHS tapes. And here is a Kenwood 12-band uh, stereo equalizer. Uh, and I'll just play with this with a signal running through it and see if it actually equalizes. If it does, I'm gonna say this works. Here is a Logitech Wingman joystick. I don't have any flight simulator software, so I'm just gonna look for some driver software for this and see if I can get responses from the buttons and the joystick control. Certainly not AV gear, but this is a pretty cool vintage electrical item. It is a battery operated card shuffler, and we'll see if this can shuffle cards for me. Okay, now that we've seen the 10 items that I'll be testing, it's time for the fun part, the interactive guessing game. If you wanna play along, I'm asking you to leave a comment stating uh, how many of the items will work, or if you wanna be more specific, what items you think will work or what items you think won't work. So uh, now would be a good time to pause that video and leave your comment. My guess, Seven of the 10 items are gonna work. Let's start testing them. I'm curious to see if this sticker is telling the truth. So let's plug in this jam box. Okay, I'm gonna hit power. I got a light, it says CD. Let's check the CD out first. I've never had a copyright strike with the uh, Bakerton group. And I hear it loud and clear. I'm not gonna slide a cassette in here. I'm going to hit play and record, and I should be recording on the cassette right now. I'm going to rewind, stop, and see if it plays back. 
and it is playing back what I just recorded from the CD. So the cassette deck both plays and records. I should go ahead and check the uh, fast forward and rewind and it rewound all the way. So record worked, play worked, rewind worked, fast forward worked, stop, eject works. Also the pause button works. Now checking the radio is going to be a little trickier because the antenna is missing. So I'm just going to shove a wire coat hanger in here and yes a wire coat hanger will work as an antenna. I definitely hear an FM radio station. Let's switch to AM. And I found an AM station. It's coming in pretty clear here in the laundry room. So this sticker told the truth. The Sony Jam Box works. I just need to either buy a new antenna or scavenge an antenna from a non-working Jam Box to put on this one. Next up is this Optimus cassette recorder. Looks like it runs on two AA batteries. Let's plug some into here. Okay, before I see if this can record, let's see if it'll play. Okay, this is rewinding. It's hard to see what's going on with all the stickers over the window here, but it is rewinding. Stop works, fast forward is working. Let's hit play. Like there come a day in a man's life when his eyebrows decide they're tired of laying down and they're gonna stand up from now on. The speed is slightly off. Let's try recording. Just hitting record didn't do anything. I'm going to hit play and record. Uh-oh. I'm going to try hitting play and record. And it's not staying down. And this is not spinning when I'm hitting record. I might be able to dig into it and fix it, but right now it's not working. So this is a bust. Mm. Two of the items that I'm testing today require a TV set to see if they work. So. Let's just test the TV set next. I got the Westinghouse logo and it's trying to pick up a channel, but I'm seeing something right here I do not like. All right, I plugged in my Blu-ray player. I still have this line going up and down on the display. I'm not gonna bother uh, checking any further because this is not something I'm willing to live with. So this TV set does not work. <coughs> This multi-region Pioneer came in a box with foam protection and, and this plastic around it. That's usually a pretty good sign. Let's plug this into a TV that does work. Here's something interesting. The remote here has a sticky overlay that I could put on here. Uh, I believe that's Japanese maybe. Someone could correct me if I'm wrong about that. With the Pioneer multi-region DVD plugged into this TV set, I am getting the Pioneer logo. And with the light stem, you can now read that it says no disc on the display. Let's pop a disc in. And it seems to be playing okay. It thinks it's on a 4x3 TV set. I had to do some digging to find this uh, TV screen. I want to set it to 16 by 9. Okay, now it has the correct aspect ratio. I'm going to hit the info on my TV and it is receiving a 480p 60 signal. Uh, so this is uh, converting to a progressive scan. Now I don't own a whole lot of PAL discs, but here is one that I picked up specifically to test uh, PAL playback. Hitting the TV info, it says 480p 60 hertz. PAL is 50 hertz, 25 frames per second. So this is being scanned, converted by the Pioneer before it is being output to the TV set. This seems to be doing a better job than my other multi-region DVD player. So if I need to do any PAL transfers, I'm gonna be using the Pioneer. This one tested good. All right, next up is this Sony VCR. I appreciate that the remote came with us. This tape is going to leave some nasty sticky residue on the remote control here. Usually the thrift store uses rubber bands on these power cords. All right, I just plugged it in and that is a good sign right there. I got something on the display. 
Let's plug this into a TV set. Regular speed play works, fast forward works, rewind works. So let's try recording something. Okay, it shows that it's going into line uh, one and it is recording in EP mode. So I'm going to stop my recording and then I'm going to change speeds to SP mode and hit record. I stopped my recording and now I'm rewinding it and it is playing back just fine. So the Sony VCR checks out. Next is the Kenwood equalizer. I've dimmed the lights in here a little bit. I've just powered it on. I saw a red light come on here. I'm gonna hit the equalizer button. Ooh, I got lights. I'm gonna play some music. And yes, I definitely hear that boost. 250 works, 500 works. Everything's working great. This Kenwood equalizer is good. To test out this Wingman joystick, I pulled out my old HP laptop. Let's plug this in. And it detected it, setting up a device. Well, for some reason, my software's in the wrong language, but I'm gonna be able to still tell if this is working. I'm pushing left, right, up, down, turning it in a circle, twisting left, twisting right, uh, hitting buttons. And uh, this, I think, is the throttle. Every button's working. Everything I'm doing on the joystick is getting a reaction on the software. This joystick is good. Next up is this blue snowball. It did not come with a cable, but fortunately I have a mini USB cable that I can use. It is not being detected here. And it says no recording device. I do have another computer I can try this on. I'm gonna do that real quick. So it was a no-go with that other computer. I do have one other cable I can try, so I'm gonna try it. I'm not getting any kind of USB device detected. All right, nothing is popping up in Device Manager. So this is definitely an example of someone donating a non-working item to the thrift store. The most likely problem is with the USB port there. Uh, I might try to take this apart and see if I can uh, fix that USB jack. It's probably a bad solder joint or something. But uh, I'm basically going to just stick this in the pile of stuff that doesn't work for now. I normally wear a clip-on lavalier microphone when I do these videos, but I don't have it on right now. Instead, I'm speaking into the realistic dynamic microphone. I've turned the phantom power off on my camera. I had to boost the gain a little bit. I am wearing headphones so I can hear myself and it sounds good to me. So the realistic microphone checks out. Okay, the last thing I'll be testing out today is this card shuffler. This looks to be a pretty old device here. Oh wow, there's cards in here. I'll check those playing cards out shortly. We'll figure out where the batteries go. This thing's made out of metal. Oh, okay there. There's the batteries. Well, it's making some racket. That wheel's spinning. This wheel's not spinning. Okay, this is how I assume it's going to work. I put about half the deck up here, about half the deck down there. Let's flip the switch and see what happens. It doesn't seem to be doing much of anything. I do smell some ozone. When all else fails, read the instructions, huh? I'm doing it right, but it ain't working. It is not shuffling my cards. Well, I am getting cards out of the bottom. It is spitting out cards. It's only feeding from the bottom. Now I think that with uh, a little bit of a little bit of TLC, I can get this thing running. But because it doesn't run right now, I'm going to say this is a bust. This won't stay a bust. This is something that I'm sure I can fix, and it's a kind of a cool device. So I think it is worth fixing. <laughs> 
Here's a graphic showing the results I got. I'm a little bit disappointed with six out of 10, 60%. I was hoping for at least 70%, but that happens when you buy electronics from the thrift store. A lot of people donate stuff that really probably should be recycled or thrown away. There are five prior risky thrifting videos. If you haven't seen them, check the description and you'll find links to those videos. If you enjoyed this video, smash that like button. Thank you to my patrons for supporting this channel and remember, stay thrifty everyone.